any other rotation, this guy might be getting a lot more hype than he does, even though he does get a good deal of hype as it is. I don't know if that's a result of being in the New York Mets organization, you know, in a major market, uh, whatever it is. He's got good stuff, uh, great stuff, really, when healthy. But like I said, he's also someone people went all gaga on, and they never really reevaluated what he is and who he is. He's never been able to surpass 140 innings in a season. Uh, I don't know if that's due to a bad diet, bad genetics, or just simply bad luck. But, you know, there's a window of opportunity for a player coming up. And uh, when it's usually when there's still some mystique to what that guy's ceiling is. And that window sometimes unfairly closes too soon on guys. Uh, in other cases, it's left open way too long. And pigeons will make their way in and, you know, set up their coop there. Uh, <laughs> it's why we love guys like Jose Fernandez who come up quickly and just establish that pure dominance. Conversely, it's why guys like Rich Hill remain relevant well into his late 30s because he's just always a guy that we're willing to say his pedigree is so high, just hasn't put it together yet, I'm willing to take a flyer. Maybe not a fantasy, but in real life, guys, those guys are just going to kind of constantly resurface and recycle. Why do I mention all that with Steven Matz? Because, again, he was, like, elevated to this extreme status immediately, and he hasn't really lived up to that yet. Uh, even when he's pitched and been healthy, he's been pretty good, but he hasn't been necessarily as dominant as you want to kind of think he is based on the name and what he's established his reputation to be. He is a strikeout per inning guy. Uh, he's got a solid ERA, an effective whip. He's not a bad player. He's just not been a trustworthy one to this point. The upside's still enormous, but I'd rather have him as, like, my fourth starting pitcher or, or greater as opposed to, like, my third or or better. Uh, he's currently the 41st starting pitcher off the board, around 166 overall. That puts him in the 14th round, which is pretty good value and upside for a guy that could potentially be better than, you know, those numbers, that draft position at least. So, Ralph, what is your take on Matt's? Because I'm I'm lukewarm on him, and obviously, yeah, I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not overly infatuated as other people seem to be. Am I? Am I missing something? I think I think it's because all of your Matt's love is 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 strictly saved up for for uh, Mr. Mr. Degrom. So I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that that's what it is. I'm a big Matt's fan. But certainly there are a lot of question marks. And the question marks with Matt's have always been the same. It's all about health. He's had Tommy John surgery in the past. He's now recovering from a shoulder injury. You have to wonder, you know, I know there were some elbow flare-ups earlier in the year. You have to wonder if the shoulder injury was because he tweaked his mechanics, trying to make up for, you know, the oomph that maybe he didn't have. And things got out of whack. Uh, in terms of the production, I don't have any issue with Matt's production. Um, I'm happy to grab him where he is in the draft at this point, especially this early in draft season. He seems like a guy to me that if he makes it all the way through spring training, same thing with his teammate, Matt Harvey, that his ADP could jump up significantly by two or three rounds. Uh, this is a guy that's a, a high eight per nine, um, you know, K rate guy. So as you said, he's about an, a strikeout per inning. He keeps the walks, you know, under three uh, per nine. And, you know, he's a 51% ground ball rate guy last season. So he gets ground balls, rarely gives up fly balls. Um, he's also another guy, much like uh, my, my buddy Kyle Hendricks, that I'm obviously very high on in comparison to, I think, just sort of in general in the industry. He's a first pitch strike guy. 64.9% uh, of the time, Matt's jams it in there on a first pitch strike, which puts him in the top 20 in baseball, um, you know, at least amongst qualified starters. He's got, you know, uh, four good pitches, you know, the fastball, curveball, slider, and change. He throws all three of those about equal in terms of his off-speed stuff. Um, so he mixes it up well. I think he sequences well. I think he's a very good pitcher. I like what I see from the surface. I like to watch him uh, pitch as well. I think, you know, he's, he's you know, the best left-handed starter, obviously, in that rotation and one of the better young left-handed starters in baseball. The big question is health. I mean, this guy's coming off a shoulder injury. He had Tommy John quite a while ago. So his, you know, his Tommy John clock that I know me and my my uh, my co-host on the Rasball Prospect podcast talk about quite honestly is the seven-year window on Tommy John. He's coming up to that in the next couple of years. So there are a lot of injury question marks with Matt's. At his current ADP, redraft, he's somebody I'm rolling the dice on. If you own him in Dynasty, I would try to cash my chips out now before he gets hurt again. 
And you know what? So it's that that's exactly kind of you just summed up my whole feeling that you kind of <laughs> frowned on me upon, but then ended it. You you you, you know trumpeted this guy your whole spiel, and then at the very end, but I would get out of this guy if I could. So isn't that kind of saying? I like yeah. what he. But what he is, I just don't really feel comfortable with him, and I don't really trust him. Uh, you mentioned he is the only – he's the best lefty in the Mets rotation. He's the only lefty in the Mets rotation currently. I ask you this directly because, as some people may know, we're in a league together that is a 30-team league, the Raz 30, and you are the owner of the Mets franchise. Uh, my question is, as a fantasy owner in, in a 12, 14, 16 league, whatever – is is it a viable strategy to just target the Mets rotation and and familiar and feel like very comfortable with your fantasy rotation? You know, I, I think on the surface it is, but they all have injury questions. So there's there's you know you're gonna get a discount on them. Um, you know, I ended up in that league, a 30 team league, and needed a first baseman because the Mets don't really have one. So I ended up moving Mats and brought in Joey Votto. Uh, which I'm I'm obviously very happy about trying to have a, a win now competing team, um, but yeah I think you know in redraft I'm not shying away from owning any of them. Um, I've drafted Degrom, I've drafted Syndergaard obviously, um, I've gotten Mats late in drafts, um, but it's a viable strategy. But there's certainly question marks. There's even question marks of Familia. So it's just you know how much are they going to pitch? If you tell me any of them make 30 starts, yeah I'd take them all day long. Yeah, it's he's a polarizing player, and I I, yeah. I think we're kind of in agreement. We went about saying it in different ways that we'd be happy with him on our team, just not somebody you want to necessarily have to rely on. And I look at like my top three starters in on my fantasy rotations as guys I'm relying on. I'm relying on them to make 30 plus starts. I'm relying on them mm -hmm. to be healthy and be there. One of the reasons I have a problem with Clayton Kershaw going where he's going, uh, just because of the back stuff. But that's a you know issue for another. Another day. Uh, Matt's good, just very, very, very questionable. Uh, risky. Risky. Risky, uh, risky and, business. 